Hello everyone and welcome to an interesting resume lecture regarding ST segment elevation. I know of course that we had a lecture called ECG in STEMI, but here we are speaking about ST segment elevation itself, not only STEMI. So our ILOs here are to understand the ECG criteria of ST elevation and what's its clinical significance and what are the different causes of ST elevation besides STEMI, because not every patient with ST elevation is having myocardial infarction. Let us first discuss the ST segment itself from the lecture of ECG interpretation. We know, of course, that there's something called the J-point. J-point is the reference point in order to assess the ST segment, and it is the end of the complex and the start of the ST segment. And of course, in order to assess the ST segment, we look at the J-point, as we can decide from it whether the ST segment is isoelectric, elevated, or depressed. And we know that ST segment should be isoelectric in all precordial leads and limb leads, except in V2 and V3, where it may be slightly elevated. So always look at the J point in order to assess the ST segment. We know, of course, that V2 and V3 leads some, may sometimes show a C elevation in normal case. We should know the cut point. It is up to 2.5 mm in males less than 40 years, up to 2 mm in males more than 40 years, and up to 1.5 mm in females regardless of their age. The questions that we always ask ourselves in the ECG lecture Isoelectric ST segment in comparison to what? What is the baseline or the reference to compare with? Of course, it's the TP segment, which is a segment after the end of the T wave and the, before the start of the following P wave of the next cycle. And we know that the straight segment here represents an area without any electrical activity, so TP segment is the baseline isoelectric line to which I compare the ST segment and also I compare the PR segment as in case of periocarditis. We have different morphological patterns for ST elevation that we see in our clinical practice that are very famous for us. But the question that we should ask ourselves when I see a patient with ST elevation, what do I need to assess when I see ST elevation in order to have like a precise evaluation? Of course, I need to assess the magnitude of ST elevation in millimeter, the distribution of ST elevation, meaning that which are the leads that show ST elevation, and is there any reciprocal depression or not. Of course, the STEMI is the first diagnosis to come in our mind in case of ST elevation, because it's the most serious course. So, whenever we see ST elevation, we think of STEMI, and that makes sense, of course. We know the definition of STEMI in the ECG guidelines, and we mentioned this before. ST elevation measure at the G point is considered to be suggestive of ongoing coronary artery occlusion. If at least two contiguous leads are showing ST elevation more than or equal one millimeter, or, of course, more than the cusp point that we mentioned in lead V2 and V3 in the absence of LVH or left bundle branch block. So, of course, ST elevation occurs in the early stages of STEMI, and usually it occurs in the lead facing infarction. So, for example, if the patient is having inferior wall myocardial infarction or inferior STEMI, the leads that would show the ST elevation are the two, three AVF leads because they are the leads facing the inferior wall. So, ST elevation occurs in the lead facing the wall that is developing myocardial infarction. And we mentioned this before that we have an evolving changes regarding STEMI. In the first stage, the ECG is normal prior to the incidence of myocardial infarction. Then it develops ischemia due to coronary artery occlusion, leading to minimal ST elevation with hyperacuity wave. And sometimes the hyperacuity wave may precede the ST elevation. Then the patient has frank and significant ST elevation. And if he is not reperfused at the appropriate time, he starts to develop pathological Q and T wave inversion in the form of biphasic T wave or whole T wave inversion. And if it was missed to have successful reperfusion, he would develop resistant Q wave and the ST segment and the T wave return to the normal patterns. So, for example, in this ECG, we can see here is a patient having ST elevation from V1 to V3. So, we are having here antiseptic STEMI, and we discussed the nomenclature before. In this ECG, we are having ST elevation in the whole precordial leads, and also in one EVL. So, I'm speaking here about extensive anterior STEMI. In this ECG example, I have heroic and marked ST elevation with the ST segment magnitude surpassing the amplitude of the R wave. We remember this pattern, of course, that we had as dedicated lecture for it. The patient had an extensive anterior stimuli with thumb stone appearance, which indicated very high risk and high risk, of course, of mortality. 
Here in this ECG example, we can see that there's ST elevation in one EVO with reciprocal depression in fewer leads, and also we are having ST depression. We store our wave in V3, V4, which are suggestive of myocardial infarction, but maybe there is positional changes, leading that the ST depression occurs in V3, V4 rather than V1, V2. So we are speaking here about postural-lateral skinny. Here in this ECG example, we are having ST elevation in the inferior leads and reciprocal depression in one AVL. So we are speaking here, of course, about inferior STEMI, but there is also ST elevation in lateral leads. So it is infralateral STEMI. In this ETG example, we are having ST elevations in inferior leads, ST elevation in lateral leads, V5, V6, and have clear criteria of the CUO MI with ST depression for our wave in the right precordial leads. We are speaking here about infrapostrolateral. STEMI. So we are speaking here and we have seen various examples of STEMI. Remember, the higher the magnitude of the ST elevation millimeter and the wider the extent of ST elevation in ECG leads the worse the prognosis. And of course it makes sense because the higher the magnitude as we see in Tom Stone appearance it indicates acute occlusion with insufficient collateral circulation. And of course, the uh, wider the extent of the ST elevation, it means larger size of infarction. So these two criteria indicate worse prognosis. We remember the notion of concave versus convex ST elevation. We remember, of course, that concave ST elevation is of a smiley face and usually indicates better prognosis as in pericarditis and the early repolarization pattern. Whereas complex ST elevation of a sad face indicates worse prognosis because it usually occurs with STEMI. Of course, it's a famous and of course it can be observed in many ECGs, but please, it is still ST elevation. Don't depend solely on whether the morphology is concave or convex. No, if the patient is having suggestive symptoms for STEMI and having concave elevation, please take it serious because sometimes the STEMI will show concave ST elevation. So we have finished here the first part of our lecture about the STEMI, which is the most famous and most serious cause of STEMI. But what can cause ST elevation apart from myocardial ischemia? STEMI is not only those, pericarditis, myocarditis, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, early repolarization pattern, chronic left mono branch block, hypokalemia, hypothermia, Fugada syndrome, and LV aneurysm. So here we are having many causes that may cause ST elevation, and they are not myocardial infarction. So STEMI is not the only cause, but of course it is the first possibility to think of in order to exclude because it is the most serious one. So let's describe the ST elevation in these diseases. In pericarditis, we remember, of course, that we are having widespread concave ST elevation with reciprocal PR segment depression, which was the characteristic pattern that the patient is having PR segment depression, as we can see here. And also, there is a knuckle sign, which is ST depression and PR elevation EVR, because EVR, of course, is the right upper quadrant, so it shows the opposite criteria. So here we are having the widespread ST elevation with the reciprocal PR depression plus a knuckle sign, are suggestive of pericarditis, but I should also analyze the chest pain in order to decide whether the chest pain is more suggestive of pericarditis or more suggestive of anginal pain. In case of myocarditis, which of course have various causes, and the most common one of them is a post-viral myocarditis or sometimes an autoimmune disease, the widespread ST elevation here has the same appearance of STEMI to the degree that you cannot differentiate whether it is a STEMI or pericarditis. One of the clues that the ST elevation here is not following a certain territory because we are not speaking here about myocardial infarction, so it should follow a vascular territory of LED, LCX, or RCA. No, we are just speaking about inflammation of the myocardium, so it doesn't respect any vascular territories, so here it is widespread ST elevation. But of course, the patient may present with chest pain and dyspnea or dyspnea alone, and so this patient may need to have coronary angiography to exclude STEMI because it's difficult to differentiate. So microdite is one of the famous causes of ST elevation. Of course, in this patient, you would have an echocardiography showed impaired LV function but with normal coronary angiography. And usually here, the resting segmental show global hypokinesia unless there is patchy affection. So ATG alone does not diagnose microditis rather than 
Sacrosoul syndrome, of course, is one of the famous terminologies that have other names like empical balloonin syndrome or broken heart syndrome. And of course, it is characterized by its widespread ST elevation beyond single territory, because here we are speaking about surge of catechol means due to stressful situation leading to affection of myocardium, so it doesn't respect territories as we have spoken in myocarditis. It shows modest elevation in cardiac markers, not explained by the ST elevation. So there is discrepancy between the magnitude of ST elevation and the spread and between the modest elevation in cardiac markers. And of course, coronary angiography would be normal. So when we are having here ventriculography, after showing the normal coronaries, it would show severe fracture of the apical segment leading to the appearance of the octopus and that explain the name of Takatsubu and of course the apical ballooning syndrome as there is more severe affection of the apical segment. And the echocardiography would show the same, there is severe hypokinesia or even akinesia of the apical segment with preserved or sometimes hypokinetic basal segments. Early repolarization, of course, is a very famous and very common cause of C elevations that is easily and more commonly seen in our clinical practice in patients who is coming for routine screening or sometimes complaining of any other atypical myocardial symptoms. It shows widespread concave C elevation, especially in precoded leads from V2 to V5 and sometimes extend to the inferior leads. And of course, sometimes it shows a fish hook pattern, which is a characteristic pattern, and we discuss this and the lecture of ECG of STEMI versus early repolarization pattern. In chronic left bound the branch block, we learned before that up to 5 mm T elevation, or to be more accurate as in the modified scarbosa, up to 25% of the depth of S-wave amplitude, we can see an ST elevation in the wide precordial leads from V1 to V3, so this is expected to be seen in chronic left bound the here is another ECG example of patient with chronic lips abundance showing ST elevation in right recordial leads which is less than 5 mm in the magnitude and if we calculate the ratio it is less than 25% of the depth of S wave. And of course we remember these modified scarbosa criteria which help to differentiate acute from chronic lip bundle. In hyperkalemia which is a serious cause of ST elevation and common in our clinical practice. What we can see in the ECG is that the patient is having hyperacute, narrow, and pointed T waves with the ST elevation. So hyperkalemia, which is a completely non-cardiac disease caused by, for example, acute kidney injury or other disorders, it's reflected in the ECG. And of course, the presence of these ECG criteria can guide the patient to go for urgent hemodialysis because of the high risk of hyperkalemia, which is life-threatening in this condition. Of course, we didn't explain yet the hyperkalemia, but I will summarize what we are going to see in hyperkalemia. Hyper QT wave, long R wave, absent P wave, Y complex T elevation, and the advanced stage shows a sine wave pattern. Sometimes the patient may develop high risk arrhythmia like severe sinus paradicardia, conduction abnormalities, high grade AD block, assistly or even VF. That's why hyperkalemia is very serious arrhythmia. We remember, of course, this feature that the T wave in case of hyperkalemia is symmetrical in our ways and pointed and is very sharp at its peak, whereas in myocardial ischemia it is usually symmetrical, broad based, and not pointed. And in the normal condition, it is asymmetrical and not narrow, of course, which is a normal variant. In case of hypothermia, it is characterized by a very famous and unique ECG feature, which is the hump like T elevation known as the Osborne wave. And this explains why hypothermia is one of the J-wave syndrome as propaganda and early repolarization. So whenever I see this pattern, I should suspect hypothermia because it's a spot diagnosis in the ECG to show this pattern of ST elevation characteristic of hypothermia. In Progada syndrome, of course, we have three types of Progada, like type 1, type 2, and there is also type 3, which is sometimes clear to be diagnosed. In type 1, we usually have the cold light ST elevation. And in type 2, it would show saddle shaped ST elevation. Of course, we store our wave in V1 to V3 because most of the pathology in Procanda syndrome is in the RVUT. And of course, we are going to have a dedicated lecture for Procanda, but Procanda is one of the causes of ST elevation that, of course, carries risk of sudden cardiac death.
LV aneurysm, which of course was a lecture that we explained a few weeks ago. The LV aneurysm, which is one of the mechanical complications after completed STEMI, can show persistent unresolving ST elevation after the onset of STEMI by more than more than three weeks. So whenever I see resistant and unresolving ST elevation after more than three weeks of the onset of MI, I should arrange for echocardiography to confirm or execute formation of LV aneurysm. So we have a lot of causes for ST elevation as we explained before, but STEMI of course is the most serious and most common. And so how can I differentiate whether it is a STEMI or these other causes apart from STEMI like pericarditis, left bundle, hyperthermia, hyperthermia, how can I differentiate this? Let's start with number one, clinical presentation. Clinical presentation is very essential because as a clinical presentation is suggestive of angina and ongoing myocardial ischemia, of course STEMI would be the first possibility apart from the ACG is typical or not typical for STEMI. It is just showing the C elevation and the patient is suggestive of bone ischemia. I would go for primary PC5. Then I would check the morphology of the C elevation. We have various morphologies, of course. For example, here it is hump-like C elevation, such as hypothermia. Here it is toad-like, such as Pogada syndrome. Here we see the fish hook sign, which occurs in early repolarization pattern. Here we can see concave ST elevation that sometimes occur in pericarditis. And here we can see the characteristic tombstone appearance that is very suggestive of STEMI with high risk of mortality. So sometimes the morphology may guide you to the cause of ST elevation. Number three, we check the distribution of ST elevation, whether it is following a specific vascular territory or not. If it is following, of course it is a STEMI, like for example C elevation and your leads, or C elevation if your leads, so I'm speaking about vessel which is occluded totally, leading to a C elevation myocardial infarction. But if they are not following a territory, I would suspect non-vascular causes like pericarditis, myocarditis, or Takotsubu syndrome. So let's look at these two ECG examples here. In the first one, there is C elevation in the inferior leads and lateral leads. Is it following vascular territory? Yes, we are speaking here about inferolateral wall myocardial infarction. So I would suggest that this is a STEMI here, which is caused by LCX dominant, LCX or dominant RCA occlusion. But here in this ECG example, I can see ST elevation in 1 AVL, 2 3 AVF from B2 to B6. Is it one vascular territory affected? Mostly. It is non vascular cause here, it is acute pericarditis based on the PR segment depression and the knuckle sign in EVR. So the distribution is very important. Then number four, the magnitude of ST elevation. Remember this code. The higher the magnitude of ST elevation, the higher the possibility of STEMI. Because all of the causes that we mentioned before, of course, cause STEMI. But if the ST elevation is very high, like for example, more than five millimeter, is more than one large square at a time, I would be in favor of STEMI due to the huge ST elevation in this case. So for example, here, in the first example, the ST elevation is growing more than about one large square, so I would suggest STEMI. In the second example, it is suggestive of early repolarization because, of course, it's just mild ST elevation, about one millimeter or a maximum two millimeter in some leads with a characteristic fish hook pattern, so this is just early repolarization pattern. Number five, the last one to see, is the S-shaped ECG signs. Don't just look at ST elevation. Search for other signs that can favor the diagnosis of STEMI. For example, hyper-QT wave, Q inversion, pathological Q with reciprocal depression. Any one of these ECG signs raise suspicion and suggest STEMI rather than other diagnoses. Let's, of course, check one of them. Hyper-QT wave maybe even the earliest sign of STEMI that may precede the C elevation. So whenever I see C elevation and hyperacuity wave, I would suggest, of course, that it is STEMI as the first possibility. Second possibility, it may be hyperkalemia and I check the potassium. But the first one, of course, would be STEMI due to the hyperacuity wave. Then let's check the T wave inversion. If I am having biphasic or nearly totally T wave inversion and they are symmetrical, cause I would suggest STEMI due to this pattern usually occurs in myocardial 
in the antiphasic T wave or the symmetrical T wave inversion. If I would see pathological Q here, as we can see in V1, or from V2 to V6, I could see frank pathological Q with ST elevation. So, sure, this is timid. It is not any other causes. And this is more than 12 hours mostly because of formation of pathological Q. But of course, I would go for coronary angiography based as the patient's having still chest pain. I would not omit his chance for repressurization just based on pathological Q. But it is a very strong sign suggesting my cardiac infarction. Reciprocal ST depression is very important to look at. So, for example, here I'm having ST elevation if you lead. You may think of other pathologies, please don't think, because it is reciprocal. ST depression 1 EDL, so sure it is STEMI, not any other disease causing the ST elevation in inferior leads. So reciprocal depression is very important to look for in case of ST elevation. BR segment deviation is very important sign. Because, for example, here we are having ST elevation, which is diffuse ST elevation, but with PR segment depression. And it is the opposite in EVR, which is a non sign. So the PR segment deviation here is suggestive of pericarditis rather than STEMI. Of course, look at the clinical presentation to see whether it is suggestive more of pericarditis or STEMI. So we have five issues to look at in order to decide whether the ST elevation is caused by STEMI or the other diseases, clinical presentation, morphology of ST elevation, distribution, magnitude, and associated ECG signs. The problem is that sometimes it is difficult and I'm still in doubt. I don't know whether this is STEMI or other diseases. So what shall I do? I think, of course, you all know the answer. Yes, as you are saying, STEMI until proved otherwise. But if you are in doubt, of course, don't depend that this patient is having another disease. No, think of STEMI and exclude STEMI first. If the patient is having normal chronos and is not STEMI, at the time I would think of the other possibilities. So, of course, STEMI is the most famous and most serious cause of C elevations that come first in our minds and we need to exclude before thinking of the other causes of ST elevation. The last question in this lecture is STEMI is the only disease of myocardial ischemia category that is causing ST elevation? No, there is another one in the myocardial ischemia that can cause ST elevation, which is vasospastic angina or transmittal angina. In this case, the patient is having a coronary artery that may be healthy coronary artery or sometimes having non-significant atherosclerotic plaque. And then the patient developed coronary vasospasm leading to reversible transmural ischemia reflected on the ECG as ST elevation with chest pain. And the patient would present as the same as STEMI patient. And when you are arranged for coronary angiography, you can find that the coronaries are normal and mostly the coronary vasospasm has resolved at the time of the angiography. And when you repeat the ECG, the ST segment has returned to normal because the myocardial ischemia has been reverted because of the resolution of the vasospasm. So this is vasospastic angina, which is one of the causes of ST elevation, but usually it is transient ST elevation. Of course, vasospastic angina has famous triggers like cold exposure, like smoking, stress of situation, hypocalcemia, cocaine intake, and sometimes it may occur spontaneous on top of LC vessel or atherosclerotic coronary artery. Don't forget that in treadmill tests, ST elevation may occur. Not only ST depression that happen in treadmill tests are we are looking for. Some patient at the peak of exercise may develop chest pain and when you see his ECG on the screen, it's showing ST elevation in specific vascular territory. And of course, this localizes the area of ischemia and signifies that this patient needs CCU admission, not just right as this patient has high risk myocardial ischemia and go for the OPD. No, you would need to be dealt with as transient ST elevation and to arrange for early invasive strategy and CCU admission. So ST elevation can be seen in treadmill test. So finally, we have spoken here about STEMI as the most famous and most serious cause of ST elevation that we all think of whenever we see ST elevation in the ECG and it has its younger sibling, which is the vasospastic angina or the transmetal angina, causing reversible and transient ST elevation. But don't forget that there are other causes that can cause ST elevation, like pericarditis, myocarditis, chronic left bundle, hyperkalemia, hypothermia, 
early reprisation in the aneurysm progata and Takotsubu syndrome. So at the end of our lecture, we understood today the ECG criteria of ST elevation precisely from the scratch and the clinical significance of ST elevation and how to differentiate between the different causes of ST elevation, whether STEMI or non-STEMI causes. And remember, our take-home message, STEMI is the most serious cause of ST elevation, but not the only one. Always use your clinical sense together with comprehensive ECG evaluation to differentiate them. Don't only depend on the ST elevation. Look at the morphology, distribution, magnitudes, and look at the other ECG sign. And please don't forget your clinical sense. Thank you so much for your watching.